What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, I received a, a great interview, a great interview. I am so, so happy for bringing in the Nick Fans Brazil channel, Maria from New York. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel. Obrigada, obrigada, bom dia. <laughs> <laughs> great, great, great. So, so happy bringing you in this channel. <laughs> nice to see you, Victor. Nice to finally meet you. <laughs> First of all, uh, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Yes. So, of course, so my name is Maria from New York City. I'm a teacher from New York City, actually. And I used to have a Nick's channel called The Nick's Chick on YouTube. I don't do it anymore. I felt like I was complaining too much on it. We went through some hard times, but um, now I have a Knicks clothing line and I'm the biggest Knicks fan and I'm working on converting all my students to be the next generation of Knicks fans. That's my job now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people, you 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 have your, see, the, your Instagram from Maria. Oh, so many pictures are oh, very cool about the Knicks. Bloods in the garden I saw in your Instagram. Great book. So many. So many, so many countries, so many yeah. countries. Not it's Brazil a great, yet. great Not pictures. Brazil. Brazil coming soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, I am curious, I am curious, Brazilians uh, curious. Uh, how start né, your passion with basketball, with the Knicks? How start? Uh, my passion for basketball probably started from my father when I was a really little girl. So my dad loved basketball. Uh, my family is from Croatia, Croatia. So Whoa. they were, big, yeah. So uh, there's a picture in my living room of my father and Dražen Petrovic. So he was, you know, he's our golden child. So I grew up always hearing a lot about Dražen Petrovic. So I loved basketball and, you know, we would go to the court and play. And my dad, like every European thought he had a good hook shot and it was a lot of fun. So I fell in love with the game of basketball when I was very, very young. Um, and then, but my father and mom, my whole family then became Bulls fans. So I didn't get my Knicks passion from them. They were Bulls fans because not of Jordan, <laughs> but because of Tony Kukoc. So they just ah. followed the Bulls players. Yeah. So, um, but I, you know, watching all the, when you grow up in New York City in the 90s, you're watching some of the best basketball that the Knicks ever played, right? So while they were watching the Bulls, I'm watching the Knicks and I'm falling in love with that team. You know, I'm like, this is the grit, the grind, um, John Starks, just like, I don't know, my heart just connected to John Starks right away as a kid. So yeah, my, my dad is definitely the reason behind my passion for basketball, but the mix of the 90s just kind of took over my heart while I was watching them growing up. And then I always like yeah. played for fun when I was younger and I coached girls once I started teaching. So I've always been around basketball. Uh, I totally understand you. I, I, I talk it with you in backstage now. Nah? With me is Patrick Ewing and Mega Drive from Sega. Yes. Let's go. All, <laughs> all the same times, all the same times. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm curious too. Oh, I saw in your Instagram you uh -huh. and uh, Knicks games. Uh, yeah. So many Knicks games. All the time. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am curious. Uh, can you tell some cool histories at Madison Square Garden? Uh, did you know or know any player? Uh, tell for yeah. us. I have I have so many stories at the garden, so I'm gonna try to. Um, <laughs> when I was younger, I was crazy. I used to go with an orange wig to the games. One time, I ran past security just so that I could meet Walt Clyde Frazier, so I could take a picture with him. Um, but I think my the coolest story I have is that after one game, it was actually a charity event. It wasn't even at a Knicks game. Anthony Mason, the late Anthony Mason was there. And I just walked up to him and I challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one and he accepted. And so I got <laughs> to play. It was so cool. I got to play on the garden floor, one of you know my favorite players from the 90s of all time on the Knicks. Um, and he beat me, <laughs> but I did score. <laughs> I did score though. So it was probably the coolest moments of all the moments I've had there. Um, just that I got to play against him you know i got to be on the garden floor and i got to make a shot so somebody has the video somewhere i have to see if i can find it 
So rest in peace, but that was a, a great moment for me. I want, I want to see this video. I, I want to see this too. video. <laughs> me too. I don't know where it is. My friend has, there's some pictures, but the video <laughs> is people that were working at Madison Square Garden. So I saw them taking the video. I just don't know where it is. Maybe I can have ah, it today. <laughs> I, I, I make it in this channel, uh, interview with Anthony Mason Jr. Yeah. And Antoine Mason. Uh, oh, later this interview, I I will talk with uh, Junior about uh, the. the yes, yeah, please tell <laughs> <laughs> Junior, yeah. do you have a video from? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, that very would cool. Be yes, very that, cool. That was very a great cool. moment. The garden is full of great moments. It's always something when you're there, you know. And that game, uh, what's what the most uh, special game you you do you saw in Madison Square Garden? That's hard. So I I almost I want to say this season the the opener the opener was one of the best games I've seen in a long time. It was a double overtime win over the Celtics. Um, you know, they Evan Fournier and Julius Randle had great games. We're not to talk about how the rest of the season went after that, but <laughs> yeah, that yeah. game, you know. Coming, the fact that it was after the playoffs and, you know, we had the, the uphill battle and the heartbreak, seeing Julius come out that strong, seeing, you know, the double overtime, the fact that it was the Celtics, so we have the rivalry against, it was electric. I mean, it was crazy at the Garden, but I probably have to, so that was great, but the playoffs just last year, you know, game two, the only game that we won. It was, Victor, I cannot explain to you the craziness. I don't know if I sat down the entire game. After the game, uh -huh. I said about it. It was a parade outside. We shut down Broadway. New Yorkers are crazy. There was fire trucks going by, no cars <laughs> to drive. We were standing on top screaming, we want Brooklyn. All we did was win one game, but we were out of control. And it was just, it felt so good. They were doing the old chant, the go New York, go New York, go, you know, and it really, it made you feel like you're back in the 90s. So it has to be that game that, you know, because it's the playoffs. So there's nothing like it. So that was, that was an unreal experience. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I can imagine uh, these people in, crazy. in New York. Crazy. Totally crazy. Totally crazy. Dancing, singing, standing on things. Just, it was nuts. It was nuts. I don't know what, <laughs> what a parade would be crazy. Uh, you 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 mentioned uh, the the song, na uh, Go New York Go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter, my daughter loves the song. My daughter oh, has uh, four years old. Oh, uh, four is my favorite age. They say the cutest things at four years old. <laughs> my my daughter uh, loves the Knicks uh, since yeah. two years old. Aww. Since two years, I have a Funko from her. Uh -huh. uh, look. Oh, how cute! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> she, awesome. Loves, uh, she loves uh, uh, singing the, the, yeah, the, the song. Uh -huh. She That's loves, cute. she loves, she loves. That's very cool. And, um, and uh, I have a friend in, in Brazil, uh, Wilson Oura, uh -huh. uh, your, your name. Uh, uh, he uh, has a um, uh, Carolis, Carolis uh, home band uh, uh -huh. and uh, he uh, creates um, video clip uh, with so many pictures from oh. Nick fans in Brazil. Oh, v uh, version rock and roll, go awesome. near go. <laughs> awesome, you have to send that to me. I want to see that. Ah, later yeah. this interview, very I will cool. send it for you. Very so cool. great, so great. Very cool, very That's cool. Awesome. Um, so. Uh, the next question um let's talk maria uh -huh. uh, let's talk about the new york knicks okay uh -huh. i want na, your opinion uh what's your opinion and uh expectations uh about the knicks uh, next season with jalen brunson and Isaiah hartenstein well, um, you know, New York was expecting a bigger point guard name, right, that we won't mention. Uh, we're New York. We're the most passionate <laughs> fans, the most knowledgeable fans. We want razzle-dazzle, right? So so Jalen Brunson is not the point guard that we were all hoping for, right? We wanted stardom. We wanted lights, camera, action. 
But I think the bottom line is that we obviously upgraded at the most important position and the position that we haven't had someone at for a really long time, right? So we no doubt have a better point guard. I might even say we have a point guard, right? Um, yes. so, yeah. So even though, you know, we had big dreams, they got squashed like they usually do. Jalen Brunson is a very solid addition at a very, very important position. So, you know, what I've seen from him in the his short time in the league so far is that with increased minutes, he's had increased output, right? With increased pressure, he's also had increased output. So watching Jalen throughout the playoffs have that, that breakout postseason shows that he definitely has a lot of potential, right? And potential is potential, and we don't know where it's going to go. Um, but certainly he's not afraid to play in New York, and that is a really important thing because a lot of players are. So I think that we can only get better, right? And not only does Jalen bring – you know, scoring prowess, but also he's there to elevate the rest of the team. So yes. for next year, when you say, you know, my expectations for next year, I think that it depends a lot on what Julius Randle does and what version of him we get, right? But the version of Julius that we get kind of depends on who's running the point. So my hopes are really that Jalen Brunson not only brings his own scoring to the team, but that he's able to elevate the scoring and the efficiency of other players like Julius Randle that struggled so much last season. Because, you know, at this point, I mean, I wanted him gone last season, if I'm being honest. I really did not want to see Julius again in a, in a Knicks uniform. I thought that when he did the thumbs down, I didn't know if he could come back from that. But he's with us, so what are we going to do now, right? So my hope is that the ball will be out of his hands. He's going to stop pretending to be a point forward. Brunson will run the team and hopefully get him in better positions to score and take more effective shots where he's not taking, you know, contested threes and dribbling the ball and immediately turning it over. So I do think he's going to elevate the team um, in that way. So I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, in that way. Hartenstein is a, a solid backup for Mitch. Um, he's, you know, for a big guy, his assist numbers were really good, which is not surprising. He's German, like your background. <laughs> You know, I think all the, you know, the German, the European bigs, they love to pass. So I'm not surprised by that. Um, you know, he's a shot blocker. He's a solid defender. He has a good mid-range jump shot. So, you know, at a very fair price, I think that we got a nice, a nice backup for Mitchell Robinson. So they're both, both of those players are elevating us. Julius Randle can't get much worse, so we can only get better. <laughs> um, so I have, you know, I also also tend to have like delusional hope. So I'm not going to sit here and complain. I'm going to say that our season can only get better than it was. We have a point guard. We have a solid point guard and maybe a great one. You know, we never know what he's capable of. We watched him get better and better. So I have high hopes. I meet you. Me too. Totally yeah. agree. Totally agree with you. And uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, in the beginning, I don't like it. But yeah. uh, so many people uh, talk with yeah. me about uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. Yeah. And, uh, Explain for me your skills, nah? yeah. and uh, I start uh, making about, interesting. Yeah, ah, I mean, uh, it's low risk, right? Because even if he doesn't pan out, we still have Jericho Sims. So with Hartenstein there, I'm guessing Sims is not going to get that much playing time. But if Hartenstein was to get injured to mess up, we already know what Sims is about. Sims is obviously also growing and very young. But it's it was no, you know, that's that's not a move that was going to hurt us in any way. It wasn't money that was anything crazy big. So. You know, we, we at least still have the both of them. So, and, and uh, the same, uh, like Noel, Noel, it's uh, yeah. eight millions, and yeah. uh, Isaiah Hartenstein is same the thing, same, right? eight, eight millions. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Your salary, and um, Isaiah Hartenstein, I, I think interesting because uh, he can open the floor, open yes. the floor, yes. and uh, Jalen Brunson. Um, Julius Randle and RJ Barrett likes uh, make drives, yes. infinite infiltration. Yeah. Uh, can be interesting uh, yeah. from this team. Uh, yeah. We shall see. Uh, I am curious. I am curious. Uh, good passer. Yeah. I, I, I like Pretty your skills, here. but in, but in beginning, Maria, I don't like it. Right in the game. Right so. Well, you never know. You know. Also, everybody's different depending on who they play under and who they play with, right? So those are yes. also questions that are in there. How does he fit in? But he's a, he's a solid defender. But there's always that question of how are you going to be under our coach, under our defensive scheme? You know, how are you going to be in the rotation with the players that we have? So he may look very different than he did. Um, yes. Sometimes. So. 
We'll see. Good point. Good point. You 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 talk exactly uh, how uh, how I, I I will say it for you. Uh, Hartenstein uh, has uh, different skills, né, compared yeah. with Mitchell Robinson yes. and uh, Jericho Sings. Né? Yeah. I I make I, I think interesting because that. Né? Yeah. Uh, I we'll see. We'll see yeah. in the yeah. next season. Né? Yeah. Yeah. And um. You 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 comment about uh, Julius Randle. Uh -huh. For me, for me, in my opinion, uh, in the last season, uh, the most problem uh, with Julius Randle here. Hundred percent, one hundred percent, no doubt. Yeah, I, I hope. I, uh, like that. I think maybe <laughs> Brunson fixes that because he needs pressure off of him, right? Julius Randle can't be the man. He, he's nobody's, you know, he's not the best player on a great team. So I hope that the pressure, also maybe RJ Barrett getting his new contract and getting the extension, maybe that takes some pressure off too. Because I always said I thought that if RJ had been drafted first, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and it was more, you know, his team and Julius didn't have that pressure on him. I don't know that, that he would have been crumbling the way that he did last season. So I hope he's able to get his mind right. I was surprised that he played in that summer game in New York City because that's a lot of pressure. Our fans in, the, in street ball games are, you know, a lot of pressure. So I was surprised <laughs> to that. I know they didn't play very well. I wasn't here for it, but uh, but I'm glad he took that risk. That so that meant a lot to me as far as where his head was at. So we'll see if he's he's the old version of himself. Oh, yeah, I miss. I just miss Maria. Nick's great. Yeah, I great. Know. I know. Great again. I know. Really, really. And uh, I want your opinion about uh, another player. Okay. RJ, RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett. I want your opinion. In your opinion, uh, RJ Barrett can be a future all star or not, in your opinion? I do think that RJ Barrett can be a future all star. I do. I think that, you know, he is he is young. He has been consistently improving. And if he continues on that path, I do think he's on the way there. But it's the, that's the key word is, are you going to continue to improve, right? So I think that his um, his deficiencies where he's lacking have been, you know, they're, they're very obvious to everyone. So he knows what he has to work on. So now it's just a matter of does he, right? So if he, he gets a little bit better with his right hand, he's a little more ambidextrous. That's a skill that he needs to improve on. He's gotten stronger. He was going to the basket a lot more last season, but now it's about can you be more efficient at the basket, right? So you're getting to the hole, yes. you look stronger, but I think he was only finishing about 52, 53%. So now it's about that improvement. You know, you're taking it to the hole, you're crafty in the paint, but now can you finish? When you finish and you get fouled, can you increase your free throw percentage? Because you're only at about 70% mm -hmm. right now. So if you're going to you know, take all those hard drives, which is great, which is what we want to see, and I like to see that a lot last year, I need you to shoot more than 70% at the free throw line, right? So if he can get that closer to 80%. But you know his points per game have gone up. He's scoring 20 points a game. Um, but he has areas he needs to improve on, the free throws, the finishing at the rim, just getting a little bit stronger. But he's a good defender. He has confidence, you know, and he has been improving every year. So I think if he continues, absolutely in a few years, RJ can be an all-star. Yeah. Maria, I want uh, more games uh, from RJ Barrett, like uh, versus Boston Celtics, yeah. the last shot. Exactly, with, uh... exactly. He's not, <laughs> and he's not afraid to take it, right? And I love that. And the Garden loves him. When, when Julius Randle was at the free throw line, we're screaming, RJ Barrett. So, you know, the Garden loves him. He's confident. It looks like he has fun playing there. I think this is going to be, you know, his team this year i hope it is i hope that he takes over with that that personality yeah yes i hope to yeah. i hope to uh i want to talk with you uh, uh the final unfortunately man but no. i want to talk with you about spider nah? yeah. donovan mitchell um uh, your opinion uh what's your opinion uh, about spider going wrong uh with the knicks well, I think where we went wrong was not drafting Donovan Mitchell in 2017. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good answer. Good I answer. think that's where we went wrong. And then we wouldn't have to have any conversation about what was wrong with everything that Danny Ainge wanted. 
<laughs> so that was the number one mistake. Okay. Frank Milikina broke my heart. I mean, I wish him the best, but Lord knows he was not worth that pick. Yeah. So now fast forward, here he comes again, right? We have this chance to get him. I don't know that we really did a lot wrong, Victor, to be honest with you. I actually think that Utah missed out. Um, and you know, now nobody knows for sure besides the people that were making these deals, right? But there is a report out that we had initially offered Mitchell Robinson, RJ Barrett, Obi Toppin, and Picks. That's crazy if that's true. That's insane if that's true. So if that's I true, I feel like Danny Ainge actually saved Leon Rose from looking like an absolute nutcase by saying no to that. So now negotiations continue and he comes back and, you know, fast forward last week here is RJ Barrett plus two picks. I think Utah should have taken that. I think that for Danny Ainge, that was a very good deal. And I'm glad that he did it. And I'm glad that we didn't have a chance to counter offer because I did not want to get rid of RJ. So I don't know that we did anything wrong if that was his, um, you know, if he was demanding RJ, then I don't think we did anything wrong. I don't think that it was worth it. I think that they were asking way too much. And while it sucks, you can't, you know, you can't look at it as, well, we should have done anything to get him. That's not true. That's, you know, if you give up your whole team to get him, he has nobody to play with. We're back in the same place we were, right? And we've done this. We've seen this with Carmelo. So in that sense, I don't know that we went wrong anywhere. But the only thing I'll say is if we had a chance to give up more picks and not give up RJ Barrett, then I think we really, really messed up. Because if I I would give up four picks in a heartbeat if it, if it meant not giving up RJ Barrett. Because I think that where we're wrong is we overvalue these picks. Draft picks are, their theoretical talent, right? They're up in the air, they're dreams that might come true and might not come true. And we never know what they're gonna turn out to be, right? So yes. instead of valuing the picks, why don't we value what's real, what's tangible, which is the actual players that we have, right? So, you know, you have a good young core. You have R.J. Barrett. I don't know why Danny Ainge didn't value that versus valuing the picks. But if we were protecting our picks and we could have done something without giving up R.J. Barrett, then I think we are really, really wrong. If we could have given up a couple of young players and four picks, take them. What are picks? Like, when you make picks in the NBA, you're doing it with the hope, with the prayer of maybe landing somebody like Donovan Mitchell. This is saying here, here's a definite Donovan Mitchell. I, you could take four picks for that from me. Four unprotected, take them. I don't care, you know? Or three unprotected and two. I just, I don't see why we overvalue the picks. So I think that's where our mistake was. But if they really wanted RJ, then I don't think we made a mistake. Then I think we did the right thing. We put our foot down and we're gonna move on with the team we have until something else presents itself. I, I I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, uh, I really, really <clears throat> wanted uh, Donovan Mitchell in Knicks. Yeah, me too. Really. Spider-Man 4. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I, I love it. I love it. I'm a bad movie person. But, but uh, Utah, so, uh, so much, so much uh, expensive. Yes. Um, too much, not no. Worth it. Too much, yeah. too much, yeah. too much, too much. Don't, and I don't think don't. they won. I don't think they won. I think that the deal that they got from Cleveland, I think that we offer them something better with RJ. I'm glad they didn't take it, but I don't think they're mm -hmm. right. I really don't. So I think there's also, there might be something personal there with Danny Ainge and his ego and, and what he was willing to accept and not, because from what I hear, they didn't even let us come back with a final offer. So, you know, you never know what goes on behind the scenes, right? And and how big someone's ego is and why they really make the decisions they make. So we'll never know, but, you know, let's move Good on with point. what we have. Yeah, we can't cry. Good point. Good point. Good, excellent point. <laughs> Two cuts in this interview. <laughs> First of all, I, I will put effects from claps for you. <laughs> And the second is this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I hear, uh, Maria, in Brazil, uh -huh. uh, people talking about a new rumor. Uh, the the Nick fans yeah. uh, talking about uh, Shy from uh, OKC. It's yeah. it's real. Uh, this rumor or not? Uh, so I don't, I don't know enough yet. I'm hearing the same thing. I don't know enough yet. I guess, you know, we're going to see once we start seeing what they want now. Right. 
And now Danny Ainge yes. has some type of crazy precedent and everybody wants all these picks and these players. <laughs> now yes. I just hope that we don't, you know, sometimes if you're, if your offer is denied, I hope that now the Knicks don't look at it and say, well, now we have to give up everything because we know they're going to play hardball because Danny Ainge just played hardball. So now I hope we don't mm-hmm. again, you know, give up. But again, I'm all about give up all the picks for SGA. You know, let's let's <laughs> do it. Um, but I haven't heard enough details yet. So when I do, I will let you know. But yeah, they're talking about it. So we'll see. Something something's got to give. You know, we're in New York, so we're not going to stay patient very long. I'm sick and tired of hearing that every year. All we hear is stay patient. So I'm sure they're on the hunt right away for the next available close to superstar. My heart's uh, broken with so many <laughs> rumors. Every year, oh, every year. Oh, my heart, my heart. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I I won't talk with you about a, another uh, subject. Um, I saw in your Instagram uh, that you you were reading. Oh, I have it somewhere. The bloody in the garden book. Uh, What did you think of this book by Chris Henry? I loved it. You know, it's funny that you just say how much heartbreak we go through as Knicks fans. So every time someone <laughs> asks me, like, how, Maria, how is it possible that you are a Knicks fan when they're so bad for so long? And I always <laughs> it's because I'm holding on to the feelings of the 90s. You know, so when you grew up a kid watching that team that was so good, that played with such tenacity, you know, such heart, you hold on to that and you hope that one day it'll come back, you know? So this book, it does such a good job of, it's like a trip down memory lane. If you watch that team, you know, it really paints a nice vivid picture for you and reminds you of how good those times were, you know, it has such good like anecdotes and stories and behind the scenes and, and little things about their practices and about their characters and about deals and, you know, what went down that we don't know. So it's such a good book in terms of like, reinvigorating you and reminding you why you're a Knicks fan, <laughs> and, you know, how good they were back then and, and why your heart feels so connected to them. And if people, you know, are newer Knicks fans, I think it's a really good read because it's telling you, you know, it's telling you the history and, and so many great stories that we don't see nowadays. And you realize so many things in the league, you know, rules have changed because of how tough our teams were in the nineties. You know, it's literally, I mean, blood in the garden but that's what it was you know that's how tough our defense was and and hearing some of the players talk about it and even hearing the the jordan stories you know it's not until so many years later that i can i, I can finally accept jordan you know for for the greatness that he was but I used to <laughs> yes um so it even has you know just some good basketball stories not even nick stuff you know just pure basketball stories so it's a really good down trip a trip down memory lane and, and makes you kind of remember the good times and forget about the present <laughs> until, we, <laughs> until we get back there, you know, great. It's book. a, it's a great book and, uh, um, great histories now about this team. Yeah. Uh, uh, Nick fans has, a a learn now from, from, uh, Nick's history, uh, yes. in 19s. And uh, so many, so many funny histories. Yes. I remember now. Uh, do remember uh, Patrick Ewing uh, uh, has afraid uh, ghosts in the hotel, hotel yeah. from Milwaukee. Yeah, was it in Milwaukee? <laughs> I forgot. Was it in Milwaukee that he thought that? Yeah. So funny. <laughs> and you know, do you know that they're gonna make a movie? You know, Spike Lee is directing a movie mm-hmm. about it. I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, it's, it's gonna so be good. so good. I'm excited for that. These were good uh, times. These were good times. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, I know. <laughs> Marie, <laughs> do you understand me? Tonight. I mean, but listen, we're so heartbroken, but it was just a season ago <laughs> when we were in the playoffs. You know, it was actually so close, even though it was a, you know, we only won one game, but it will take it. <laughs> just, <laughs> now with a point guard, you never know what will happen. So I always keep optimistic. <laughs> We can't get much worse. We can only get better than last season. So <laughs> let's have some hope. Uh, it's very complicated because in Brazil, uh, uh, do, uh, I saw you like it, uh, soccer, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I saw a World Cup in your, yes. your history. Yes. Uh, in Brazil, people like more soccer, right. okay? The most sport in Brazil. Uh, and NBA, uh, younger 
uh, younger fans like yeah. more today. Okay. Uh, Golden State Warriors, Brooklyn Nets, uh, Cleveland, oh. Cleveland Cavaliers, and another teams. It's complicated for me uh, yeah. because I love this team. In yeah. Brazil, uh, Knicks, uh, the channels, media, uh, talking uh, with jokes yeah. uh, when when talking about the Knicks. It's complicated. Yeah. I am angry. I am angry. I yeah. angry. So many Stephen Smith in Brazil. So many Stephen Smiths in Brazil. Yeah, I spent a lot of my time <laughs> defending the Knicks. A lot of my time. <laughs> but sure. we'll we will be back and then everybody will want to join on. So when we're good, there's nothing like it. Like I said, that, game, <laughs> that win in the street, the party we had, it's when the Knicks are good, there is nothing in this world like it. So we will be back <laughs> soon. People love, hate the Knicks. Yeah, impression. they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, I, I am sad uh, about Donovan Mitchell because uh, I, I, I saw uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, so many important uh, from marketing uh, yeah. in, in, the, in other countries like Brazil uh because uh so many channels uh when this rumor began with the yeah. knicks uh talking so much about the knicks in brazil yeah. i am so happy so happy yeah. happy and uh, i saw don't ever meet you in calves <laughs> it's complicated i, I it's found complicated. out i was in the middle of a meeting at work i screamed i was so upset <laughs> they were like what's wrong with her <laughs> And uh, uh, you in this you in this channel, Anthony, uh, Alan Han, Bill Pito, Chris Herring, and yeah. so many so many people from United United States yeah. uh, coming to to our channel. Yeah. It's very very important uh, yeah. because uh, uh, I I feel and my uh, my audience feels so uh, so uh, more close. Uh, oh, with the cool. steam, yeah. with the city, nah, yeah. with the city, nah. it's very important. Uh, cool. Brazil don't don't talk so much about the Knicks. Yeah. I talk it I so do. much <laughs> about the Knicks. Right. And, uh, and now you have to come very to New York, so then you can do a show from the garden, and then they'll really feel close. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I want make a trip this channel. Yeah, uh, in twenty three yeah. or or 24 okay. i i really really want yeah. next year yeah 20 brazilians 20 yeah. brazilians awesome. with me in the in this trip i really 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 that would be awesome. uh, want that to do this trip. we'll we'll put together a party so let me know <laughs> <laughs> i want to meet you i want to yeah, meet so you I'll definitely i'm at almost every single game so i will definitely see you there we'll have a brazil section it'll be cool <laughs> <laughs> Oh Maria, I love this interview. I love this interview. Me too. Really, Thank you for really. Having me. <laughs> so oh much fun. It's so much so fun. awesome to see that you know how far Nick's fandom spread. So it's really nice to talk to you. And hopefully, I'll see you in New York at a game soon. I hope uh, you ne, come back uh, oh, in this channel I, in the future. I, will. I hope the next time live because I'll be in Brazil at some point soon. <laughs> <laughs> in the future, I make a interview with you and Anthony together in this oh, channel. Oh yeah, that would be great. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll be talking about how Jalen Brunson came in and changed the team. And let's, let's go to the playoffs. Let's go to the playoffs this season, and then me and Anthony will come back and do a show on here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and thank you so much. Thank you so Obrigado much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Obrigada, right? Obrigada. Oh, that's great. I like it. Oh, you talk you talk Portuguese a little, but you talk. Well, I went to Portugal, so I had to learn how to ask for those, you know, the good pastries that they make. Then <laughs> you learn a couple of words. <laughs> and uh, too, Saúde, right? Saúde? Yes, yeah. yes, Saúde. <laughs> word. Cheers and thank you. <laughs> I will teach for you more, more yes. words in yes. Portuguese, okay? Awesome. Deal. <laughs> Deal. Very nice Deal. to meet you, Victor. Yes, me too. Uh, I, I really, really appreciate né, uh, this time with you. Your time. I appreciate oh, wow. né, uh, you your too. time in this channel. Great, 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 great honor uh, 
uh, you. bring you in this channel. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take care, Maria. Take care. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan, I'm a Nick fan.